All right, and welcome back for the episode of Carnivore Trade. Today is Wednesday, July 19th, 2023. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, let's get into it today. Uh, so doing the video a little earlier than normal um, because I've got some obligations right after the bell and I would normally do this later since we have Tesla and Netflix reporting, but um, I'm just going to give you the best I can right now. Um, basically, right now with Tesla, uh, your big gamma level is at 300. You can see we tried to get up there today, 299 and change, and then they, they hit it down. So that's going to be a level of interest to watch. If we do push above that on earnings, um, you could gamma squeeze Thursday, Friday on Tesla. Um, Netflix, everybody's watching 500. That's about 4% away. Tesla's about 3% away from those levels. So those are the big levels to watch as we get into the end of the week. There's AT&T as well. Big bounce there. I talked about this on Twitter. Um, take a look at this big uh, supply zone. Very oversold up 8%. Same thing with Verizon. Uh, big level there as well on VZ. That's up nicely. Um, so lots of movement here. OpEx week is not disappointing so far. Apple got a big move. Um, again, <laughs> jumping in on the AI train that ended up being the high of the day here for the market so we got a huge huge surge there on volume um, I mean and you got to think about it too that's like a five dollar move on Apple in 10 minutes um, just think about the market cap there so just in, in, incre incredible insane buying here um, in these large cap tech stocks it's pretty remarkable to see them move as much as they are um, and it's really concentrated, right? So it's not like everything else is rallying. Yes, we're seeing a little bit of a broadening out uh, to a degree, but just to see Apple and Microsoft being able to move like that much um, just on an intraday basis is pretty, pretty remarkable. I don't think there's ever been a time where we've had this much of a concentration here at Microsoft. Um, I think I read some statistic. It was like the, the move it had yesterday was more... Com bigger than the combined earnings or so, something of that nature of the, the, the last 493, um, you know, S&P stocks. It was something, some crazy statistic like that. It feels like we get one every day here. But anyways, uh, Microsoft getting a nice bid yesterday, obviously Apple um, announcing another AI program. So they jumping on the on the AI train again, watch Tesla there, um, 300, a little bit of a rising wedge there. So we'll, we'll kind of watch that. And we are into the 618 now as well. So right there, 295, 300, 300 and change. So could be some resistance. Again, earnings are, is a wild card. It's hard to really make much out of the price action beforehand um, because you never know what you know earnings are going to do. So and then there's Netflix. There's your breakdown area at 500, um, and we're you know pushing up towards that right now. So I don't know which way it's going to go. A couple of things I do find interesting though. Um, is and kind of pointed this out recently, but the VIX here, um, this is getting a little hard to ignore the fact that we're continuing to make higher lows here with the spiders making higher highs. Now, you might just say, well, it's hedging into earnings, so that makes sense. It could be, but this has been going on now for five weeks that it has not made a new low. So, something's a little up here. If you ask me again, they don't hedge. I mean, Five weeks in advance hedging for earnings, that seems a little strange, um, but something to keep an eye on. I think the market's trying to talk to us a little bit here. Um, as protection gets bought, as we go more and more vertical, I mean, you gotta remember, we are up 6% on the triple Qs in the last three, six, seven, eight sessions. Um, that is not normal. And I think you're seeing some people come in to buy protection here. So at the very least, that's what um, I'm seeing right now. As far as tomorrow, I, um, you know, it's hard to say what without, seeing tesla and netflix earnings so again i apologize for that but you know you get a pop i guess we could get up to the highs of the day on the nasdaq there and then we get you know we start to get really stretched again um i did talk about possible fade here um which i did take myself this morning um set on a gap up you could fade that um some of my members did that too you know got like 10 points on the es doesn't sound like much, but on a slow day, you know, you take what you can get. That's nothing to sneeze at in this market where it's very hard to get a short on anything. But either way, you know, markets coming off the lows here and the light volume is taking over. You know, Spiders just 50 million shares here at 3.33 p.m. That is uh, extra, extra light. 
And again, markets just waiting on those earnings. So again, 300 for Tesla and 500 are kind of the magnet levels right now. We'll see how that affects the spiders. Um, maybe we get, you know, and here's kind of the risk reward to taking that that fade setup this morning. Um, you know, you've got right now on the spiders, I'm going to use the SPX. You know, here's your 4,600 and, you know, 4,500 is down here. The 20 moving average is down here. So if you get a rug pull Thursday, Friday, which can happen many times during an OPEX week when you pump up big uh, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, think about this. We've gapped up one, two, three, four, five, you know, six out of the last seven days we've gapped up on the uh, on the spiders. Um, so short term stretched here. Here's your resistance. Here's your risk. And then here's your downside. So. Um, to me, risk reward made sense there. So if we get a pullback um, Thursday, Friday, or a rug pull, you know, look at 4,500, that's going to be a magnet. And then, of course, the 20 moving average. Last OPEX, we did have some risk come in post that. So if we pull back or if we push up to 46, then we'll look for 45 in the next, you know, following week. And then we have the FOMC too. So that is going to be interesting as well. If, you know, if we're still up into the FOMC, it's going to be very interesting to see how that uh, plays out here. Maybe that's where the VIX is trading up. Maybe people waiting on that. Um, starting to build a volatility position into the uh, into the July FOMC, but either way, levels haven't changed against spiders or the SPX rather. That 4600 handle is going to be your next big wall, um, and then to the downside, we'll look at 45. So pretty simple there again, as usual. And then the triple Q's here again, 390. We talked about that yesterday. Q's are actually managing to be fractionally lower here right now. We'll see if they allow for a red day on the NASDAQ 100 here, but 390, there's your pivot high. And then if you take out 380, you know, it seems to kind of coincide with this trend line here and that 20 moving average, then you can go down and test this lower trend line here. Uh, Russell 2000 having a decent day, although it is coming off the highs up just a quarter of a percent now. Um, again, we talked about going under those pivots on the weekly. So there's your big uh, weekly inside bar pattern that failed so there should be some resistance up there and that's kind of where it's stalling out very interested to see where this closes of the week uh, but iwm holding up for now we'll leave it at that Dow a little bit of a reversal there um, so big move early and then kind of coming off the highs a little bit of a shooting star uh, we talked about this area here right around 354 353 didn't quite get there and now we're pulling back again we'll see how this uh, trades out here if you pull back look for this area, 343, 345 to get tested. And um, if that's support, then that should uh, hold up there. Uh, semiconductors on the softer side today. AMD uh, is very interesting to me. This is, I, I've told you guys this before. I think AMD is topped out. I'm very interested to see what they do on earnings. Um, I'm kind of waiting on this one here, but nice reversal there after the big gap up today. NVIDIA down as well, up 1.2, or excuse me, down 1.2. Still not broken. That may still want to go test 500, regardless. But semis pulling back there, and again, if they do take you know this pivot out, you're probably down to that 150, 152 area. But right now, they're holding up okay. Uh, cloud software, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days in a row green, um, getting a little lofty up here, as we've talked about. Still watching this level here on the weekly, so 367.22, and that's basically where we're sitting right now. We'll see where that closes by the end of the week. Um, again, if it's you know, 350 pulls back, 354 should be support, should coincide with the 20 moving average there in the near term. Uh, Dow transports holding up again. So that's above this pivot and confirming there. So transports are holding up well. Um, next big level here, we're going to call it 16.5. So that's going to be uh, something to watch for there. I believe United reports after the bell. So that may be market moving. I think tomorrow we have a few more of them reporting. Um, but DJT holding up okay and nice move there uh, for the transports. Uh, interest rates, so a little interesting here for rates is you're seeing the long end kind of get a bid here. Um, again, take a look at the yield curves. I just tweeted this out. You know, so much for that uninversion, right? So the 210 going right up into the 50 and then re uh, reversing. Three month, 10 year, again, same kind of thing fives and thirties, tens and thirties reversing off those lows. So again, the 30 year bond is getting a bit as the yield comes down and the two year continues to hold up the short end of the curve. Look at the three month, look at the one month holding up well, two year, five holding up better, 10 a little bit worse, and then 30 year uh, continuing to come in. So again, that short end of the curve is very interesting. Um, you know, there's chatter right now too, and I've talked about this recently that 
year over year, so CPI is calculated year over year, um, you know, and the main culprit for the CPI falling is oil. We look at July where it was um, and June, it peaked out in June last year and then kept falling. So it's going to be a lot harder for that CPI to beat. I think the two years kind of telling us that here. Um, Nat gas as well. That was nine dollars, eight nine dollars a year ago. Um, so that's going to kind of factor in here, moving forward. But again, yields holding up. I don't expect them to go much lower. If they do, um, that's probably a buying opportunity. Anyways, XHB, the fractionally lower. Let's not make much out of that. That's holding up. ITB, same thing. VNQ, a little bit of a bid here. This can do some more consolidation, and it can push up to ninety. Um, if it does so. So I don't see any, I think VNQ is starting to turn the corner a little bit. This could be a sector that gets a bid, um, but still got to get above that trend line there. I don't think it quite does it this week. Uh, XLF trying to push above this trend line. So we are there right now. We'll watch that. You also kind of got that 100 moving average there on the weekly. So that can be a level to watch. If you get through that, it's going to want to test 36. Uh, so XLF getting a nice bid and holding up there. Some of these banks, Morgan Stanley had a nice day. Um, Goldman reported earnings that continued to get a bid. Uh, Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo, there we go. Citigroup all holding up well, although Citigroup is the worst of the bunch right now. KRE confirming above this trend line. Still need a weekly close though, before I get too excited about it. Same thing with KBE, although this is looking pretty good here. That can get up to 45, 46. So we'll watch for pattern on that one. And then broker dealers here, almost a new all-time high, 510. Um, we talked about that yesterday. That's where it's pulling back. It's a little short-term extended, so probably needs to come in a little bit, but this can push up. All right, we talked about crude a little bit. Um, again, convergence here, weekly red bar high. So 80, uh, 76, 69, you get a weekly close above that. Crude starts to get really interesting. Um, but right now, pulling back off of that level, lots of trend lines in here. I colored them a little bit so that they would be a little bit easier to see. Um, you bust through this, then it's up to 82.72 on crude futures. XLE having a decent day, still weekly inside bar that I don't like. XOP holding up. If that consolidates, that can push higher, but it's still got some work to do. OIH having a red day here. I'd like to see this one come back in. I will be a buyer of that with members. Nat gas holding up as well. Nice pop yesterday inside day. Very interested to see where this closes the week. Um, but I am expecting this to test $3 in the not so distant future, possibly even next week. Um, okay, dollar index getting a bid. We talked about a counter trend rally and it's starting to get one. So it's not much, right? You're still inside of this red bar from last Thursday and it's a little bit off the highs there. Um, kind of back checking to that blue trend line, which goes way back. Um, yeah, look at this, those fibs there I've got on there from a while ago. But right there, you got monthly breakout area, and it's trying to back test that and trying to break it on the downside. I'm in the camp that it does eventually. Um, we've just hit it too many times. But in the near term, we can go up and test 102, 20 day moving average. Um, so that is a possibility here. And again, dollar up today with the spiders up. So um, we're in that kind of mania, euphoria type phase here where nothing matters. Every every 25 basis point dip is bought in, in stocks. Um, but dollar index getting a little bit of a bounce here. And again, we'll continue to watch that. I do think it gets some type of a bid here. Gold inside day, nothing to do here. Watch for pattern though. It's holding up right now. Same thing with silver, watching for pattern on this one. Don't chase it higher. Um, platinum rejection at 100 or excuse me 1000 we'll see how that behaves here um again watching for pattern on this i'm not convinced the low is in on platinum but it's had a nice move there off the lows and palladium nothing to do with that one just yet either copper pulling back a little bit remember we lost that green bar low we had good volume behind that we closed below it so a little bit on the softer side you lose these moving averages then you got to hold 368 370 um, otherwise you know i think it's going down to 340. Okay, so lastly, over to Bitcoin, um, not a whole lot going on again. So really just kind of another micro inside day. Weekly pattern looks fine. That can still move up here. Um, the longer this spaces, the higher it can go. It's still looking for about 30. You know, we'll, Let's raise the target to 33 right now just because we've based for so long. Um, but right now, it looks fine as long as you stay above uh, 28.5. If you break below 28.5 and then 26.3, then this is over with. Uh, but right now, 
I can't see any problems and it looks perfectly okay. Okay, back over to the spiders here real quick. Um, so again, 51 million shares. Looks like we're coming in off the highs just a little bit. Um, we'll see, Tesla 300, Netflix 500. Everybody's watching those levels. Worst kept secret, those are the gamma walls. Um, they could gamma squeeze the next two days if we push through that. Um, we'll see if they defend it. Market makers defend that level. Um, but right now, again, at levels here on the spiders, you know, 460, 4600 area on SPX, 390 triple Qs. Um, let's keep it simple until proven otherwise. We break below 380 and this trend line, um, then it can get a little bit more interesting to the downside. Same thing with the spiders. You break below 4500, um, then possibly you can go to this uh, secondary trend line here. Anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find me on conovertrades.com. I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow.